Okay, I'm going to try to make sure I talk slower this time and don't look away from the mic so much. Okay, here we go. 7-3 and 7-4. Um, more on probability. Um, I didn't mean more on probability. That would be silly. No, I meant more on the subject of probability. Okay, I should put my jokes in the questions. I think that would be a good idea. All right, um, this is about um, why you would ever want to use multiplication to count um, outcomes and probability. This came up in the do now last time. It's about if you have three coins and you're trying to figure out how many ways can three coins turn out. Uh, and a lot of people said, oh, that must be eight because there's two possibilities for the first coin, two possibilities for the second coin, two possibilities for the third coin. Well, yes, that's true, but you know, why would you do that? Um, and I also drew this tree diagram, I think, last time. Um, and this kind of helps illustrate it. Some people like tree, tree diagrams. I really don't. Uh, what this means is, okay, here's the start of your experiment. The first coin can either turn out heads or tails. And so that's what this little thing represents here. The first uh, event can split it out into two different outcomes. If the first coin out turns out to be if the first coin turns out to be heads, after that, the second coin could turn out to be heads or tails. Similarly, if the first coin was tails, the second coin could still be either heads or tails. So by the time we've flipped the second coin, we actually have a total possible list of four different things it could have been. If the first coin was heads and the second coin was heads, the first coin could still after that be either heads or tails. Same thing with this path. If we had heads on the first coin, tails on the second coin, the third could either be one of those two things. Anyway, if I continue this idea, I see that there's eight possible ends to these little branches here, this tree diagram. I listed the, the total path here. This would be heads, 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 gives me that one. Uh, this one over here, for example, we go tails, heads, heads, ends up on this one. This, the name of this little branch is tails, heads, heads. Uh, and that shows you that, yeah, there is actually eight. Where could we have gotten that possibly from the numbers 2 and 3? Well, 2 times 2 times 2, or 2 to the third power is how that's going to count up. And we're going to talk about when is it appropriate to do that and what kind of situations. Oops, sorry about that. Um, in the book, they call this the multiplication counting principle. And when can you um, multiply when you're counting up outcomes? Well, uh, if you're choosing an outcome from one set followed by an outcome from another set, and my first example it was um, coin number one followed by coin number two. Coin number one had two possibilities, and then it was followed by coin number two, which had two possibilities. I was going to flip coin one, then coin two. I have two times two, or four total possibilities. Whenever you're going to do um, something from, from a first set and then followed by something from another set that's totally unrelated, it could be any one of the first set followed by then each one of those choices leads to a whole new number of things from a second set. You simply multiply those two those two possibilities. I've got lots of examples here. First one uh, is about a test that has 10 multiple choice questions on it. And each one of those multiple choice questions has choices A through D. So you've got four choices on each question. So for the first question, you've got four choices. For the second question, you've got four choices. For the third question, and on and on like that. So how many ways are there to answer the test? Well, I have to multiply 4 times 4 times 4. Question number 1, question number 2, question number 3, they all get exactly uh, four possibilities that they could, they could come out. You, you could make a tree diagram for this. You could list this out. The first um, the first um, question would have A, B, C, D. In fact, let me do that. Question number one could turn out to be A or B or C or D. And for question number two, well, if question number one was A, question number two could still be A or B or C or D. Oh, my gosh, this is going to get really cramped really fast. And question number two could have been A or B or C or D if question one was B. So question one is B. I got four possibilities for two, A or B or C or D. If question one was C, question two still could have been A or B or C or D. You see it's going to lead to a lot really fast. And if question one was D, question two still could have been A or B or C or D. I got a whole bunch of branches already here in question two. Question three, well, if one was A and two was A, three still could be four things. Oh, my gosh. And B could still be four things. And C could still be four things. I am not going to finish this because this is just craziness pretty soon. But you can see every time I add a new question, I'm multiplying whatever number of stems I had. Each one, each one of these stems, each one of these branches is going to branch off four more times, and it's going to keep going like that. So I get to the fourth and fifth and sixth questions. 
by the time I get to this tenth question, I'm going to have so many branches. I'm going to have four branches from each one of these each time. That's a lot. So uh, that's why this is going to turn out to be such a huge number. Because each, each choice for each question uh, gets sort of compounded by uh, when we move to the next question. For two questions, we have 16 choices. A, 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 B, A, C, A, D, B, A, B, 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 C, B, D, and they're all different. Uh, that's eight of them. I imagine you can you can uh, fill in the rest there to get those first 16. And for each one of those 16, when I go to question three, they each would produce four new ones with with the choices for the third question. Anyway, so we have a total of four to the tenth, which is over a million ways to answer a 10-question multiple choice test. Uh, so if you were going to guess at random, what's the probability that your all your answers were exactly right? Well, basically, when you hand in your test, you're only you're basically filling out the entire test of 10 questions. You're doing that um, in your way, and you've just picked one for each one. Um, you've you've basically selected one of these choices, and there were uh, over a million of them. So your your chances of getting that right are are less than one in a million. Actually, this is one in and just over a million. Okay, so here's some questions for the video here for you. Uh, how many ways are there to answer the first three pages of my last geometry test? This is actually a little bit of a uh, I just made this up a little bit, but suppose I had a geometry test that had um, 10 true false questions and then it had five multiple choice questions that were that were you know had choices a through d and then five multiple choice questions that had a through e all right well, let's look at that the first 10 questions were true and false how many choices are there in true and false well the first question there's two possibilities second question there's two possibilities third question whoops third question there's still just two possibilities etc how many are there for the true false total <coughs> excuse me to the 10th power I have ten. I have two to the tenth ways I could have answered the, the true/false part. Then I have a set of these, the five multiple choice. This is the true/false. I'll just draw this right here. The five multiple choice questions that were A through D. Well, I have four choices on the first question, A, B, C, D. Four choices on the second question, etc. This is actually four to the fifth power. I can actually write this. It's not that bad. This is four times four times four times four times four. And this one I have. On these last five questions, I have five choices for the first question, five choices for the second, because these go A, B, C, D, E, and there's five of them, so five to the fifth. So I have, just on the multiple choice part, say this is a page, sorry, on the two false page, I have two to the tenth. On the um, A through D stuff, I would have four to the fifth, and on the a through E stuff, I have 5 to 5. Then what do I do with these three big numbers? Well, I have to make this decision, and I have to make this decision, and I have to make this decision, or actually this list of decisions, and this list of decisions, and this list of decisions. When you say and, and you keep making decisions, you just keep multiplying, just like I was multiplying in all these little steps here. So I am going to do that on the calculator. So I have 2 to the 10th. What going on? Uh, yeah. Let me back up a sp Okay, clear. 2 to the power of 10 times 4 to the 5th times, get me out of there please, times 5 to the 5th. This is easier with a real calculator, but then you can't see it. Okay. It's going to be a huge number. Yeah, okay. Oh my gosh. So that's zeros, zeros, 3 trillion, no, 3 billion, 276 million, 3, 2, 7, 6, 8, and a whole bunch of zeros. All right. 3, 2, 7, 6, 8, and a bunch of zeros. It's a huge number. That's, uh, yeah, over 3 billion. Three billion ways you can answer that thing. So the question number number two is, assuming that you had two kids who really didn't know what they were doing, and they just decided to guess on the whole thing, uh, and they were just randomly guessing, they weren't even looking at the content of the question. What's the que what's the probability that they were going to have two of those that match? Well, the fr it's kind of like this one up here with uh, you know the probability you guessed them all right. Um, the first kid's going to make whatever test they make, where they made one decision on each one of these, and one decision on each one of these, and one decision on each one of those, which is a great, big, long, complicated multiplication problem that is equal to one. Uh, and then the, the chances that the second kid had exactly the same thing, well, they had to choose the same one and one and one, every one answer for every single thing. So that all adds up to one. I should say multiplies up to one. So that's kind of a hard concept I think at first to realize that 
two things matching, the probability is one out of the total. Because the first kid basically gets to do whatever they want, and then after that's done, it's like almost having the answer key, like up here. Let's say the first kid's um, test, we'll, we'll call it the answer key, even though it's wrong. That's the, that's the thing that the second kid is trying to match to be favorable in this situation. So it's like he's got to get them all right, according to this other kid. So that's... Um, yeah, it's one out of this three billion, three billion number. So the question is, what do you what do you suppose uh, what do you suppose the odds are that they cheated? I'll let you think about that. All right, next major concept has to do with this with replacement or or without replacement. We get a lot of questions about this uh, throughout the the chapter. In fact, with replacement and without replacement are both big today. Uh, replacement, I usually think about when um, those first examples you may have heard about in probability years ago, where you've got colored marbles in a bag, and you've got like five blue marbles, and like how, how does this really happen in your life? You have four red marbles, and three black marbles, and two white marbles, and you are going to pick one out, and you're trying to figure out the probability that it's going to be a black marble. Well, then you pick a second one and try to see if the probability, you know, if that one being black also. And it makes a huge difference whether or not you put the first one back in before you pick again. That's kind of what you can think of about this whole replacement, uh, replacement idea. Uh, replacement means whatever you choose the first time, does that choice get replaced back into the pool? Is that choice available then after that for the second, for the second uh, choice? For the second decision, for the second event, and that those two types of events um, are all over the place in probability. Some things are with replacement, and some things are without replacement. It's just one of those natural phenomenons of life, and it makes a huge difference of how you calculate and count out probability. Uh, so, if you were going to um, do those multiple choice tests like we've been doing, uh, if you answer A to the first question, you can answer A to the second question. There's nothing uh, wrong with, with using A more than once. So that's like we're using A on number one, we replace A back into the pool of choices for number two and number three. So that is, that is definitely a with replacement kind of idea. A without replacement idea would be something like putting books on a shelf. So you have five books and you have to put them in order on a shelf and you can put them in any order you like. If we were going to try to count up uh, how many orders there are to do that, if we're going to count up the ways there are to make the decisions of putting the books on the shelf, uh, if you put the, you know book number one in position number one, then you can't put that book anywhere else. When you go to make decision number two now, you can put the second book in there, you've only got four books to choose from. So your number of choices, your number of possibilities for each successive decision starts to decrease every time. Because once you assign a book to a spot, that book is no longer available for the next thing. That's quite a bit different than multiple choice questions. So uh, our next task is to talk about um, are these, these choices here, video question three, is this with replacement or without? Being dealt five cards from a deck of 52. And what, what I mean by the, the decisions and the situation here is you're, the, the five situations are you're going to be dealt card number one, then you're going to be card, dealt card number two, card number three, card number four, and card number five. And in those five decisions, my question is, do we, if we want to count those, is it going to be with replacement when we go to the second card and the third card and the fourth card? So um, when I go to think about the first card, I could be given any one of 52 cards. There's actually 52 choices for that first card. After I have the first card and I go to get my second card, I don't have whatever card goes here. I don't get that anymore. Or if you think about this, after the card gets dealt, now there's really only a deck of 51 cards sitting there for me to choose from. After I've taken these two cards out, there's only 50 choices left for the third card and 49 choices for the fourth card, etc. So this is definitely a without replacement. I don't get to repeat cards. Think about I think the multiple choice is a great example of with. And this is nothing like multiple choice questions. I can't have the same card as my first card and my second card. It just simply doesn't simply not possible. Flipping coin five times? Well, I got flip one, flip two, flip three, flip four, flip five. I, I think I did five in all these to be to be convenient about it. Uh, first flip of the coin has two possibilities. It could be heads, it could be tails. Uh, once you do that, how many choices are there for the second coin? Well, it could still be heads or it could be tails. Third coin could be heads or tails, or third toss, I should say. Could be heads, could be tails. All of these could be heads or they could be tails. So when I go to make these decisions, when I go to pick, when I go to see what happens with heads or tails, heads or tails, heads or tails, the fact that this is heads does not take heads out of the possibilities for the second one. I'm going to pause there and I'll see you in part two.